thank you so much. I'm very grateful to be listening to all these great presentations. And it is an honor to present to you the design and some of the findings of my analytical model uh, of my project mapping German fiction in translation. This paper is actually based on my PhD thesis, which I um, completed in February 2023, very recent. Um, the project's long-term aim is to develop tools for visualizing translations, channels of literary transfer, and the translational canon in national collections. So I'm grateful to have this opportunity to also draw your attention to the invisibility of quantitative translation research in the DH in regards to German, and to propose novel approaches to utilizing the wealth of bibliographic data in our national repositories such as the German National Library Catalog, the repository I predominantly work with. The aim of presenting this model is to test it further on bibliographic data from different li library catalogs and work toward a cross-catalog analysis of translations. In other words, I hope in the future it will be possible to compare the language networks of literary transfer as presented by, for instance, the Austrian, the German, or the Swiss National Library collections. For this presentation, I will focus on the different building blocks of my model of analysis with a special focus on network analysis and community detection for identifying translational routes of transfer between linguistic uh, communities. First off, uh, let me give you an idea what uh, motivated this project and what were kind of the initial, um, my initial point of interest. So um, many years ago when I was living in Turkey, I would go into bookstores very frequently and I would see all these German authors reappear in translation constantly. I think um, at one point in time in 2012, I saw like all of a sudden all these translations in Turkish reappear of Stefan Zweig and I was like, what's, what's going on? Why is it like all of a sudden Stefan Zweig is kind of um, popular? Um, meanwhile, I also uh, noticed that a lot of the, the many um, representatives of German literature, such as Ilse Eichinger or Ingeborg Bachmann, did not actually make this reappearance. So I observed this kind of um, imbalance between translated titles and an author's uh, position in the national canon. This got me interested in how we can utilize bibliographic translation data extracted from national collections to test the translational tendencies and global canonization of translation, translated German fiction. In my research, I investigated what the role of canonical and non-canonical authors in the global circulation of German fiction in translation is in connecting literary communities. In other words, I'm interested in the role of an author's translationalism. By translationalism, I mean their connecting function between languages and li literary cultures in geographic space. More about that uh, in the findings section. Zweig here is a really interesting prime example here really forming a strong connection between uh, the German um, literary um, environment and uh, the Turkish uh, literary culture. Um, so my initially my interest in utilizing bibliographic data, um, for any of you who are not familiar uh, with what uh, bibliographic data is, we had a really great panel yesterday on Biblio Data Working Group. Um, it's basically any of this, all of this information you see on this page, which is ingested regularly in library catalogs as uh, titles are submitted to, um, to the library. Um, so my interest in utilizing this data of translation brought up two major challenges. Firstly, um, when looking around, there's not a lot of research on bibliographic translation data for German in the DH, which is also reflected in a lack of models and a lack of data sets. To date, in fact, um, besides the one I'm, I'm preparing to my knowledge uh, for German fiction and translation, there's no data set freely accessible that is extracted from the German National Library catalog. And um, as a DH scholar, one will continuously ask, where's the translation data and where's the translation research in DH? So in fact, in DH conferences, translation research is still rather rare, with a total of nine papers on translation research scattered in the program of this specific conference and one panel 
um, titled Reader's Tropes in Translations. In DHSI this year, there's no workshop talk on translations. We can also see this in scholarly publications. In DH Quarterly, for instance, I could not find a single title that explicitly mentions translations or their data. A comprehensive review, however, of course, of the state of quantitative translation studies, uh, research in the DH um, beyond these few exemplary environments is certainly required. In general, quantitative translation research is more so situated in bibliographic data sciences, in information library sciences, in critical archival studies, in cultural analytics, and of course in translation studies, for which the number of projects using quantitative met methodologies and bibliographic data increase each year. Still sort of on the way. However, projects that do use bibliographic data of translations of German fiction are mainly case studies, case studies specific. For instance, just to name a few, um, the study of Norrie Krühl and Bold in 2017 on translated German fiction in the UK or James Raven's work on the German novels in, trans in English translation in the 18th century or Jasmine uh, Donahue's work on the 3% database for translated fiction in the UK and Ireland with many more interesting projects, of course, also for other language that exists, not just for German. However, that gives you an idea that it's a very um, quantitative translation research for German is still very case study specific, mostly focused on single authors, on single um, target languages and so on. Alongside the sparsity of translation data um, for fiction originally published in translation, of course this kind of case study specificity also brings up challenges for designing quantitative models that can be replicated or used on different catalogs or different data sets. In many ways, we can see that translation still occupies this in-between place, not only transgressing national boundaries of disciplines, so we can even ask our translations of German fiction still kind of German literature, or are they kind of an extension of the national canon, um, or should they even be part of um, studying German studies in general? So in addition, um, Translations also challenge the DH, in my point of view, to rethink some of their tools in the light of the specific characteristics translations bring with them. Some of them um, I will address in this presentation. Hence, the objectives for this project um, are directed at addressing the invisibility of quantitative translation research in DH for German and the sparsity of translation data for German fiction as well of, as um, kind of the sparsity of quantitative models for mapping the literary transfer between linguistic communities. Um, my first objective, hence, was to curate the first data set of German fiction in translation extracted from the German National Library catalog. Secondly, to design and test a model for the quantitative analysis of the bibliographic translation data set based on existing theoretical and methodological frameworks. And thirdly, to map the networks of transfer between language groups of German fiction and translation using various visualizations, such as geographic maps, network of graphs, but also simple frequency distributions. I will just very briefly um, introduce my data set. Um, so the data set um, at the moment is not openly accessible. I'm still preparing it for publication, so please have patience. Um, it will be published hopefully this year or late next year um, under creati Creative Commons Open Access License. Um, you can see that um, for my data set, um, obviously I use the German National Library Catalog as the main source. Um, I used a search query that looks for all titles originally published in German. You can see what that looks like in the, the catalog um, looking at the language field, and um, that's a very important field I was working with when also constructing my model. Um, so for the years 1980 to 2020, that was the last year when I had to wrap up my thesis, um, the titles, it resulted in close to 36,000 titles um, by, by roughly 6,000 authors in 91 languages. Now to introduce my, um, my model. My model is grouped under, right, basically my findings and my analysis is grouped under three main pillars. Um, the first of all, um, my, it's, it's aims at testing three central hypotheses. So going back to my initial observation about Zweig and the Turkish case, 
I was interested in measuring the uneven distribution of um, authors and languages, and I, therefore I use concentration as a measure of the over and under representation of a translation of a given author or uh, a given language. To measure concentration, I use uh, frequency counts of titles by language and titles by author. And based on previous studies on translations by scholars such as Bergen, Mann, Le Pen, and Venkat Mani, and Susan Basnet, that pointed out the Eurocentric tendencies um, in world literature canon of translation. I expected to find that translations are predominantly published in few languages by few canonical authors. And indeed, my findings actually confirm um, previous, um, previous claims. And this kind of uh, sort of Eurocentric notion in the catalog with a strong concentration uh, of titles in few languages and European publishing centers. You can see the concentration um, by the number of titles on the map. And we see that 83% um, of titles are concentrated in top 20 languages. I also found that a very small group of authors um, actually have more than 125 titles and 30 languages, meaning only a very, very small portion of all the authors actually are um, widely linguistically distributed and highly concentrated in the titles and translations. Next up, um, I measured connectivity of the translation network and the literary transfer between language groups, and I used a uh, network analysis for that. And that goes back to Heilbronn's uh, thesis of his 1999 uh, article um, that literary transfer is conditioned on the positions of translations, so um, languages being either having either a central or a peripheral um, position, also um, with another third group of semi-peripheral languages. German, as he argued, had a very central um, position. And Heilbronn actually argued that this uneven flow, so I, um, hypothetically my observed um, imbalance, uh, observed for Zweig, was due to the per periphery mostly being connected to the center. However, what does that look like in practice? To give you an idea how I constructed my network. So I constructed a, a weighted unimodal network with the languages representing the nodes and um, languages being connected by authors they have common translations in. Again, uh, under this um, underlying assumption that authors form connections of transfer in the language network of translations. Um, so I basically um, used the data extracted from the German National Library catalog to construct uh, an author language matrix where the, the rows uh, represent the authors and the columns represent the languages and the values represent the number of translations they have in those languages. From there, we can uh, then construct a language-language matrix um, looking further at um, how many authors, uh, languages that are linked by how many authors, which you can also see represented in the values on the, on the lower table here. And this is just an example graph to give you an idea. Here, English appears connected with Turkish by having both having translated titles of Emine Sevgi Özdemar, for instance. Let's talk about some of my findings. I ran several centrality measures. Um, I also ran like eigenvector between us. However, here I'm only gonna show you the most concentrated authors, the authors that have the most, more than 100, uh, the languages that have more than 100 authors. And um, by looking at languages by shared authors as a first step, I tested Heilbronn's centrali centrality argument. And I found, firstly, that the network is highly connected, but with increased concentration, so the more authors, translated authors a language has, the more we can see kind of certain languages appear as a clear center and more peripheral. But also, we can also see um, the importance of semi-peripheral languages here uh, to the left side of the graph. We have Norwegian, um, Portuguese, Turkish, and so on. So um, we see this polycentrical structure emerge. As a second step, I asked, can I use an unsupervised method then of community detection to classify the central and the peripheral language groups? 
and then to use uh, to look at um, at shared authors or authors unique to each language group. So I was really interested in um, which authors are actually connecting language groups. Therefore, I used a community detection algorithm. I used a fast Quidi one. Thanks to the colleagues for already explaining <laughs> a little bit the, the modularity and how kind of uh, how that works. Um, I use that on the language language matrix to identify peripheral and centroid languages by shared authors. The result was uh, two main clusters. You can see um, the, the smaller cluster, number three, clearly represent the concentrated and central languages. They also happen to be the most concentrated langu languages in terms of titles, and number four, the peripheral language groups. So I found this was a generally very feasible method to kind of uh, go from Heilborn's um, hypotheses and claims to um, an unsupervised, uh, applying that to the data in an unsupervised way. As a next step, I was interested in looking at authors specific and shared across central and peripheral languages. So community detection hence further allowed me to identify author communities specific or connecting language communities. And I found actually, just looking at the authors that connect the center to the periphery, I found that 33% uh, of the authors, which are also happen to be representative of the canon, connect the center to the periphery. Very interesting here. Also, you can see some of the authors here. Um, of course, highly canonical authors, but also kind of bestsellers, uh, such as Patrick Suskind. And very interestingly, some I, I um, by applying this method, I also found some, some different authors that did not appear to be very concentrated in titles. They didn't have a lot of translations in the data set, such as Ulitze and Jenny Erbenbeck. And, um, and um, I also found, in addition, that these what, what sets these authors so, sort of apart, as I argue in their translationalism, is that they have um, single titles that have translations in many peripheral languages, and they play a kind of a, a major role in kind of reaching out to the periphery. Right, let's come to the, to the last um, component of my model where um, I sort of um, coupled community detection with geographic mapping, and this is really to visualize the channels of transfer by authors in linguistic and geographic space. And um, in the resulting map that you see here, this is only for peripheral languages. I basically just subset um, my database um, by peripheral languages and then um, map the publishing places. So here, places appear connected if they have uh, a common author in translation. And I want to just um, draw your attention to the green lines on the map, which represent bilingual publications. Very interesting finding here that um, bilingual and multilingual publications here play a major role in really connecting different publishing places, different linguistic communities in geographic space. And uh, that was also an interesting, um, that also brought me, brought up some interesting authors that are really um, kind of set themselves apart in their translationalism that we wouldn't see when just looking at the most concentrated or the most, um, the authors with the most languages and so on, or with the other measures I applied. To conclude, um, as I hope to illustrate showing you the results and visualizations of my model, I really hope to show that translations in the German National Library catalog make visible the network of literary transfer. Library catalogs therefore represent a rich source of bibliographic data, and my work really goes at countering that sparsity of translation data that we encounter um, for German. And I also um, view in my work uh, the library as a space where world literature after Venkat Mani is imagined, defined, and redefined. And um, it's, uh, it's important to keep in mind that we're still looking at just one source, but we're sort of, I also kind of um, conceptualize the, the catalog as a representative of, um, of, of the knowledge, uh, literary knowledge. Um, secondly, mixed method uh, a model is necessary to model the different aspects of translation. So translations having languages, authors, publishing places, 
but of course that model can hopefully in the future also be expanded to translators and publishers, something that lies beyond the scope of my study. And an analytical model based on language as a unit of analysis can not only confirm, as I argue, or challenge previous claims such as the Eurocentrism claim, but also lead to new insights on linguistic communities and the authors that are circulated within and beyond them. The importance also, um, the importance of smaller networks of literary transfer can uh, very well be looked at. And thirdly, um, coming back to uh, the point I introduced um, at the beginning of this talk, for me designing and testing an unsupervised quantitative model for bibliographic translation data opens up the possibility of a cross-cultural analysis. My work also on a more technical note addresses many, many, techni uh, many technical smaller challenges. Uh, for instance, for multilingual bibliographic data, translations are multilingual by nature, and um, especially for geocoding uh, different place names in 90 plus languages, that's a major challenge. And um, also cataloging practices, also a huge thing that I hope to document throughout um, keeping working on this project. The, my long-term aim is really to testing my model on other catalog data, the German National Library, uh, the Austrian National Library catalog, or the BNQ in Quebec, for instance, and to build tools for cross-catalog analysis of translation. Last but not least, I just want to um, draw your attention to the resources I'm developing. So, of course, everything I presented today, or most of it, is um, you can read about more in detail in my thesis. Um, all the scripts and the data used for the social network analysis um, you can find on my GitHub. And for the full data set, please have patience. Um, I'm preparing the documentation at the moment. And then for other web applications, uh, for the visualizations I'm working on, you can always uh, look on my website. Thank you. <laughs>